from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Welcome back to our ongoing coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. It's virtual this year, just like everything is virtual this year, but it's still the biggest event in cloud and we're excited to be back. I'd like to welcome in our next guest. He is Ariz Yarconi, head of cloud and telco technologies for Checkpoint Software Technologies. Ariz, great to see you. Nice to see you, Jeff. Thank you for hosting me this morning. Absolutely. So let's jump into it. You've been in the cloud space for a while. I, I saw a great uh, interview with you, I think like four or five years ago when I was doing some research and you're talking about, you know, all the great innovation that's coming from cloud. That was years and years ago. Now suddenly we had COVID arrive and I'm sure you've seen all the social media memes, you know, who's driving your digital transformation, the CEO, the CMO or COVID, and we all know what the answer is. So first off, I'd just love to get your perspective. You've been in this a long time now that we're here in 2020, both in terms of the development of the cloud and the adoption of the cloud, as well as this accelerant uh, that came into our lives in mid-March. Yeah, Jeff, you know, I, I, I've been lucky that uh, I got to participate in this kind of uh, innovation cycle of uh, IT and uh, technology. Um, earlier, I was a, a CIO for a, an organization, a large organization, and, and we were adopting cloud. Uh, at the same time, uh, as an organization, we were selling technologies and networks to our customers, and they were asking uh, to adopt cloud and so on. And these are probably some of the early interviews you looked at. So. I got lucky that uh, I had to look at my own organization and understand where cloud is, is beneficial. And obviously now I work uh, with cybersecurity and securing the cloud. Um, so it's all come together. I think that you know, as, as cloud technologies came in, it really came in to help uh, many of us address uh, the fundamental need uh, to come to market with business uh, capabilities and functionality faster. For those of us in technology, you know, we, we're probably always the bottleneck of our business counterparts that said, well, if you could only do this for me, I could grow the business, I could change the business, I can go to other places, I can incrementally bring more customers, uh, revenues, and so on. Um, the cloud platforms have done a tremendous uh, job allowing uh, developers and uh, operators of technology to change the speed in which they service their businesses. Uh, but with speed comes security. And uh, I think the cloud platforms, you know, specifically uh, platforms like AWS uh, built security into, into the cloud as well. Uh, but there's other needs in it and the pandemic or COVID, um, all it did is it shifted some of these motions into another gear and then it uh, created some new business needs that can only be uh, serviced uh, digital. Me and you are now having a collaboration session over a digital channel where otherwise we'd be probably sitting in the same studio. Um, so definitely collaboration has changed. Um, commerce have changed, especially for some organizations that never planned to do commerce over digital channels, small businesses and so on. Uh, just think about the food delivery industry and how many new customers have now, sorry, restaurants have now signed up for uh, food delivery services. That must have exploded. Um, these continuous changes brought continuous needs to address uh, security as well. Um, AWS uh, is allowing people to build some amazing applications. Uh, I watch the commercials when I watch uh, football on Sunday, right? So Peloton and Zoom and education and uh, many other things. And uh, yeah, so when people build those uh, amazing applications, the next thing they need to do is make sure that the Zoom session is secure and nobody's crashing in if uh, you have a bunch of kids uh, doing Zoom for school. There is, you talked on so many topics on that. So let's, let's break a few of them down. First off, I just, you know, Thank goodness for cloud, right? If, yeah. if this pandemic had hit 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, we would not have been able, those of us in the IT industry, to shift so easily to cloud-based, uh, or excuse me, to working from home or working from anywhere because of the, the cloud-based applications, huge enabler. But it's funny, not once in what you just talked about did you talk about cost savings. And I still find there's a lot of people that are looking at cloud 
as a way to save costs. You've been in it for a while. You know the truth is all about agility and speed of business, speed of adoption, speed of, of innovation. You said it in every single one of your answers, but it still seems to be a lag for a lot of people. Now with, with COVID and you know, securing people work from home, you know, one of the big issues, let's go back to security, is increasing attack surface. Uh, and we know the increasing sophistication of the bad guys. Now I'm hearing from some people that they're actually using old techniques that they used to use back in the day because they know people are at home and maybe things aren't as locked down. You talk about security needs to bake, be baked in all along the way. We're using all these um, you know, more and more cloud-based apps. How do people think about the security perspective? How do you bake it into everything that you do? And how do you respond to the increased attack surfaces that have now suddenly opened up? to look like for probably a little while, not just uh, going back to the old way anytime soon. Yeah, so, you know, you, you touched on that. Uh, you said that uh, you hear about people using uh, old, secure, old, old uh, attack um, methods or vectors or, or so on uh, coming back because people are now at home and no longer behind uh, a very secure environment in their office or uh, in their data center. Uh, people had to maybe move things that they never thought they would, uh, call center operations. That was by definition, you showed up to the call center uh, for certain organizations and moved it out and they may have not been ready to move those applications and so on. So they had to address uh, the security of it. I think that's exactly it, which is now um, some of the reaction we had to have for just staying in business uh, we used kind of very uh, older uh, or, or, you know, we increased what we know about security, about remote access by increasing VPN capacity for the organization or, um, or those type of uh, methodologies. Uh, now people are looking at what happened to our topology, to our architecture. Where are people and machines coming in to execute their work? Uh, over the network? Where are the applications residing? What have we moved to the cloud? Because we had to now flex for capacity and speed and maybe uh, localize and, and, and move it into regions and so on. Um, I don't think it was about cost saving. I do think it was about business agility, especially in this phase. I actually think that at the end of the day, the big benefit from cloud is business agility. Um, cost has to come with it. We cannot sacrifice cost in everything we do. Um, and we look at uh, overall how we use cloud technologies and other technologies and make sure that the cost uh, fits into uh, what our business uh, demands from a cost structure. But it is about business agility. Um, now it's also about security agility. So people are building you know, methods and capabilities uh, to match the business agility with security. And security was, at least for me, for instance, as, as a CIO, security was a bottleneck. So when business demanded agile development, uh, you know, uh, iterations, sprints, uh, deliver functionality in weeks, uh, and, you know, keep pouring it into the environment, uh, one of the inhibitors was uh, security. Right? We weren't ready for it. We weren't ready to release it. So we had to uh, find a way to adopt it. And then came in companies like AWS saying, we built some of that security built into the platform. And companies like Checkpoint saying, we have cloud security that moves at cloud speed and allows you to integrate into your CICD um, environment or, um, or processes and uh, allows you to match the speed of the business with the speed of security. Yeah, that's great. I mean, again, I, I agree with you 100%. It's all about agility uh, and, and, and speed of business and being uh, able to move faster. It just always surprises me how people, how many people are still kind of stuck on the cost saving piece. And then the other thing, of course, which you're super aware of, and if you've ever been to one of, you know, kind of the technical keynotes at AWS reInvent, the amount of investment, you know, that they can make in infrastructure, including security, you know, just, just completely over, overshadows anything uh, you know, I as an individual company can invest just in terms of the resources. And then somebody like you guys can leverage on top of not only using the the massive Amazon, you know, kind of core investments in security at, at, the, at the infrastructure layer, but then all the stuff that you guys can do in terms of securing the enterprise and, and helping make sure that, you know, the right people have access to the right information at the right time, but not a lot more than that. I wonder if, if you can um, 
you know, talk about, you know, kind of zero trust and some of the, the evolution within security in terms of the posturing and, and how you, you know, kind of make assumptions. As we said, it's no longer a wall, a wall anymore. It's no longer talking about having these physical borders um, or even logical borders, but it's really about access and breaking down access even to the person and the application and, and the data, et cetera. Yeah, I think you asked specifically about zero trust, uh, you know, and I think that uh, um, w we want to move, maybe want to keep that the the theme here around uh, the application security and so on. I'll get to uh, zero trust at the end, uh, you know. So one of the things that that definitely is is thematic or or we see uh, happening is uh, in the evolution in the maturity curve of adopting the cloud, the uh, initial adoption was, uh, you know, maybe some lift and shift from organizations and the uh, IaaS layer was a big player. Uh, but the PaaS layers of the cloud are where all the interesting happen, where all the exciting services, all the innovation coming from organizations like AWS, all the enablers for ag business agility uh, and uh, capabilities are coming from there. Uh, and when you start developing your applications for that PaaS layer, or you start uh, leveraging the services, uh, the type of security changes. So you're no longer looking at network security or maybe northeast, east, west, uh, north, south, east, west type of security on your network. You're now looking at securing APIs and securing the the backlane of the cloud uh, from those services that they give you. You know, you got to encrypt your bucket. You got to make sure your security groups. Uh, are correct. You want to make sure your serverless functions uh, are not uh, executing uh, anything uh, malicious in them or uh, or uh, talking to uh, IP addresses they shouldn't be. Uh, same with your container. You want to make sure that your container code uh, is scanned properly. You didn't download anything in there that's malicious uh, and obviously uh, have runtime security uh, both to make sure you're compliant from a posture uh, perspective, you may compliance may require you to be PCI compliant. One of those, so the the elevation in which you execute to security changed uh, from the from the stack from a kind of a, a, a traditional stack. Uh, it requires uh, different uh, capabilities, and between what AWS has built into the platform and what Checkpoint puts together in CloudGuard. Uh, this is big, the, the big target. Then we get into, okay, so how do you access all these great things that we just built, right? So we built these, this great application. It's sitting on AWS. It's using some of the great services there. Um, how, do you, how do you get to it? Who gets to it? And how do you get to it? This is where some of these, you know, SASE and zero trust come in because what happened is you used to come into a lot of enterprise applications from the data center. Then we moved some web apps and you came over uh, the web into the application. So we have some web firewalls and, and, and security for that. Now you're getting into every application from the edge of the network because we are all at home or we are, we used to be traveling, but a lot more of us are now at home coming over the edge of the network. We're adding IOT devices coming over the edge of the network and so on. There's a lot more volume coming at you and you got to find different ways than just uh, VPN authentication of the traffic into. So we are coming into the age of having to identify who's coming at the application, at the capability at any given time. And that's where you come into the framework of zero trust. I, every time you come in, I'm going to authenticate that as you. And there's different methodologies in there. Uh, for instance, one of the things that uh, we just added to our portfolio is the ability to put an agent, let's say, in your uh, around your AWS application um, and allow remote access with no VPN to your enterprise app uh, w uh, to an acquisition company uh, we call Odo uh, without having to put a VPN. So the administrator defines what applications are connected to the connector they define who's the users uh, that are allowed and authenticates them based on the authentication framework, let's say Octa or something like that, and allows them to come in. And that, that, those are the type of capabilities you need in these new frameworks of how do you get to these great applications we're building. Right, right. Yeah. And you touched on something really interesting, right, which is, which is the complexity is only going up. As you, you mentioned Edge, you mentioned a little bit of IoT, right? So as 5G comes on board, as IoT gets increasing amounts of traction, 
all these uh, applications are API based. There's all types of information flying back and forth. So I wonder if you can share kind of your guys thoughts on, you know, applied machine learning and artificial intelligence to help, you know, kind of get through all the, uh, all the signal or excuse me, all the noise, find the signal and really, you know, bring more automation to help the security experts and the security systems be more effective at their jobs. Yeah. So, so I think a lot of what we talked about until now was, um, protecting, establishing a new perimeter. There's not really a perimeter, right? Because we talked about the perimeter has grown and it's fuzzy and, and, and it's uh, at scale that really doesn't allow you to say, I have a perimeter, so you have to authenticate everybody. But like you said, with that speed and scale came a lot of data. You know, you've got a lot of logs running in there. You got a lot of events. You got a lot of things that you can look into and by looking into them, you can start with machine learning and, and those type of and AI methodologies, start looking both to identify things before they happen or uh, um, inform organizations and inform um, about things that are already happened and, therefore, and, and potentially remediate them. Um, at Checkpoint, for instance, we have something called the threat, the threat cloud. Uh, we collect uh, these events from every gateway, every uh, appliance, every virtual appliance, every type of security agent that we have around the world uh, into uh, the threat cloud that uh, processes. Uh, and I'm going to throw a number there that's uh, the close to about 80 billion a day transactions. And 80 billion with a Yeah, B. and it allows us to, um, to process, uh, to apply machine learning uh, and AI algorithms to find threats and then inform all these great uh, checkpoint security agents out there uh, of new threats and prevent those threats from ever happening in the in the environment, right? If you're operating on a on an AWS environment, uh, there's a lot of log flows happening in your environment. There's a lot of things to collect and look at. Right, so in Cloud Guard, we offer something called uh, Logic or Log.ic, uh, which allows you to harvest those uh, logs. We enrich them, and then we allow threat hunting inside those environments. Right, so those type of capabilities are definitely kind of the future of advanced security. Right, so beyond just establishing, it's like you know you establish your security around what you do, and then you have your intelligence unit starting to identify what signals are out there uh, allowing you to uh, both prevent uh, 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 security uh, breaches or any type of threats, uh, but also remediate any, any, you find the traces of things that happen and remediate them. Right, right. Well, there is, that's, that's just a great illustration of, you know, kind of baking security into multiple steps of the process and all the steps of the process. That's not just a bolt on anymore. It's got to be you know, part of everything you do and baked into everything you do. I still, <laughs> I still wonder how certain companies that, that, that are run by having people click on links that they're not familiar with still happen today, but I guess, I guess they still do. So as I give you the final word, again, you've been in this space for a long time as we kind of turn the, turn the page on 2020, what are some of your priorities? What are you excited about for 2021? I, th I think the most exciting uh, things for us in, uh, in cloud security in 2021 uh, is uh, we're releasing more capabilities into, into the environment. We're in the maturity curve of uh, protecting you know, your network in the cloud and then protecting your posture in the cloud. We're moving very strongly into protecting your runtime and applications in the cloud, your APIs. Uh, and working with organizations through that maturity curve and getting them up to all the way up to uh, uh, threat hunting uh, capabilities. And I think that will be uh, exciting because uh, I hear from customers uh, that they need to move quickly through that maturity curve of cloud security as they have accelerated and continue there to accelerate their move to the cloud. Well, that's great. Well, I think uh, no shortage of job security in the cloud security space. So I'm sure it'll be a busy year. Well, Arez, thanks for, uh, for sharing your insight. Really appreciate the time and it was great uh, catching up. Thank you, uh, Jeff, for, uh, for your time today. And it was great talking to you. Absolutely. All right, well, he's Arez, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.